My brothers and my sisters in Islam, if this was your last Ramadan, how would you spend it? What would you do? There is no good time to give sadaqah. The time is now. There is no good time to start praying. The time is now. There is no good time to read the Quran. Time is now. The time must be now. Because by Allah, we don't know when we're going to live and when we're going to die. When was the last time you really connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you cannot be righteous and good in this month, then really you have no hope. There's no hope for you. Why? Because there are no excuses. Shayateen have been chained up. There is no way to go except Jannah. Jannah is open, Jahannam is closed. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees hundreds and thousands and millions of people who have been destined to go to, to hell. He frees them because of their good deeds. If you can't be amongst them, if you're not able to be good in this month, then really and truly, there is no hope. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you in order for you to reach God consciousness. Taqwa. My servant abandons his food and his drink for me. His basic needs which I naturally created for them to survive. He has given it up for me. Fasting is for me. Bring it to me. I am going to reward this person in a special way that only I know about. If only you knew. When Allah knows everything and we don't know anything. If, if the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew what Ramadan means, what the value of Ramadan means, what the reward of Ramadan is, they would wish that all the year become Ramadan. Don't we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us? Don't you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the high strengths in paradise? To save you, to free you from Jahannam, the torture that we have never seen before and we will never understand and comprehend. A person who sees this Rahmah, who sees this Maghfirah, who sees this season and doesn't rush and approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to rethink his lifestyle. How many Ramadans have we promised Allah that we will change? How many Ramadans have we said this Ramadan will be different inshaAllah? Maybe this is your last Ramadan. How do you know you will live? How do you know you will live till next Ramadan? Years have passed and still we haven't made that real change in our life. Still people haven't come properly to the correct deen, to the perfect deen. My brothers, this month is our chance. It might be your last chance. The night of power. And how will you know what the night of power is? My dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, I received a, a message from a, a brother and I'm just going to read that message out to you. This is my, probably my last message to you. As I lie here waiting for my last breath to go away, you have known me for a long time. I've just been a very basic Muslim, tried to do my prayers, tried to fast whenever Ramadan would come tried to say my salah, did hajj once in my life. Yeah, I had children, but never really looked after them. I had a wife. She wasn't the most righteous person. I never really, really chose because of that. And my children grew up not knowing much about Islam. And as I wait here for the bell to go off as my life will end, dying of pancreatic cancer, of which the doctors have said I cannot survive beyond this week, as I wait for the angel of death, I have only one word that comes in my mind, and that is regret. I just have this tremendous regret that there's so many things I wanted to do, you know. I wanted to memorize the Quran and I never did so. I wanted to go for Hajj every year, but I never did that. I wanted to hug my mother, but I never did that. I wanted to teach my children Islam, the Quran, get them to be righteous people, but I never did that. I wanted to have the chance to have one more Ramadan, but I'll never get that. I wish I could be in Haram now, but I'll never get that chance. I wish I could know some verses of the Quran to recite, but I don't know anything except the Fatiha and one or two other surahs that I recite every day. All I can think of is huge regret. 
No one will remember me except you and perhaps my own family if they have time before they divide up my wealth. My friends have left me. My family will not remember me. I will have left nothing in this world of good and by Allah all I will have done is just added another grave on this earth. I am your brother, your Muslim brother, Muhammad. They are full of regret by Allah. I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. But subhanAllah, they have forgotten that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a tremendous life, full of wealth, full of time, full of youth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that opportunity by Allah. Yet they never really took it. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, if this was your last Ramadan, how would you spend it? What would you do? If tomorrow the doctor came to you and said, you have terminal cancer and you will not live more than three months. The problem is, my friends, this world that we live in. How many of us truly have connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us truly can confidently say, but Allah, there is no more anything that I can do if I know death is tomorrow. There is no good time to give sadaqah. The time is now. There is no good time to start praying. The time is now. There is no good time to read the Quran. Time is now. There is no good time to start memorizing the Quran. The time is now. There is no good time to, to look after orphans. The time is right now. There is no good time to call your mom and say sorry. The time is right now. Call her now and say, Mom, I'm sorry. Mom, forgive me, Mom. There is no good time at all, my friends. The time is right now. Because by Allah, we don't know when we're going to live and when we're going to die. So my brothers, my sisters in Islam, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When was the last time you really connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When was the last time you really felt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for you? If you cannot be righteous and good in this month, then really you have no hope. There's no hope for you. Why? Because there are no excuses. Shayateen have been chained up. There is no way to go except Jannah. Jannah is open, Jahannam is closed. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees hundreds and thousands and millions of people who have been destined to go to, to hell. He frees them because of their good deeds. If you can't be amongst them, if you're not able to be good in this month, then really and truly, there is no hope. Nobody can now come and say, Oh, shaitan whispered into my ear. There are no shayateen whispering. If you do a bad deed in this month, realize 100% this deed is from you. Any evil that you do in this month, it comes from your own soul. So Ramadan is a reflection of who you are. If you are good and righteous in Ramadan, this shows that you have a good side to you. But if you cannot be good in this month, then realize that there is no hope for you at all. And this is not my words, this is not my speech, this is the speech of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. One day, when he was giving the Friday khutbah, he climbed up the pulpit, and his pulpit had three steps to it. And so he climbed up the first pulpit and he said out loud, Ameen. Then he climbed up the second and he said, Ameen. Then he climbed up the third and he said, Ameen. So the companions were confused and they said, O Messenger of Allah, we have never seen you say Ameen every time you climb up the pulpit. This is the first time we have heard you say Ameen. What was the reason for this? The Prophet ﷺ said, When I was climbing up the pulpit, Jibreel came to me and told me, O Muhammad ﷺ, anyone in your nation who manages to be alive when Ramadan comes and yet cannot get his sins forgiven, then may he perish in the fire of hell. Say Ameen. So the Prophet ﷺ said Ameen. Then he climbed the second step. Jibreel said, O Muhammad ﷺ, Anyone who manages to catch Laylatul Qadr and he does not manage to get his sins forgiven, may he perish in the fire of hell, say Ameen. So the Prophet ﷺ said Ameen. And then he climbed the third one and he said, O Muhammad ﷺ, anyone of your ummah who manages to catch his parents, one of them or both, when they are elderly and they need his help and he is not able to service them properly and get his sins forgiven, then may he perish, say Ameen. So he said Ameen. So three du'as were made. That there are three golden opportunities. Three opportunities that even the worst of mankind can get their sins forgiven if they only turn to Allah. Two of those opportunities are related to Ramadan. 
realize that the month of Ramadan is now upon us. This sacred and beautiful month, a month that the Prophet Sallallahu during its time he stood up on the mimbar and he called the Sahaba and he gave a khutbah to them and he said, O oh people, know that a month is now upon you. Know that you are witnessing a month that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made sacred, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made obligatory to fast during its days and he has requested that you stand during its nights. It's not obligatory to stand but it is good that you do it. And this is a month that every single night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves people who are destined to go to the fire of hell. Brothers and sisters, this is that very month. This is the month of Ramadan. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you in order for you to reach God consciousness. Taqwa. Taqwa. In the Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Every action that son of Adam does is for them. However, he said, except for the fasting, my servant abandons his food and his drink for me. His basic needs, which I naturally created for them to survive, he has given it up for me. Fasting is for me. Bring it to me. I am going to reward this person in a special way that only I know about. You, my dear brother or sister, as a true believer, you give up and you surrender your food and drink and sexual desire for an entire month out of desire and intention to draw yourself closer to Allah and fulfilling the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and come closer to Allah, draw yourselves closer to Allah and submit to Him before the day of torture approaches you and you will have no support. And this is what you are doing in Ramadan, is what you are doing in your fasting. Fasting is one of the tremendous ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to educate ourselves, to honor ourselves, to make ourselves better people with a better attitude and a better personality. And it lessens the burden of physical, mental and spiritual harms that one may be afflicted with in this life and in the hereafter. But if only we knew how, if only you knew. Allah wants to forgive your sins. But those who follow their tempting and sexual desires, they want to ruin you and they want to turn you away from righteousness and purity. Allah wants to lessen the burdens off you. But man was created weak in his nature. So it is a holy month. It is a wonderful month. The month in which this great revelation, the Quran, was the words of Allah, not created. A part of Allah, which are his words, was sent down to us. Allah does not intend for you hardship and wants for you to complete the period of the month of Ramadan and to glorify Allah for guiding you. Allahu Akbar. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is guidance. Allah says finally, in the hope that you will be grateful. Allah knows everything and we don't know anything. There are two pleasures for the person who fasts. One at the time of breaking it and the other at the time when he will meet his Lord or her Lord on the day of judgment. Then on the day of judgment, he or she will be pleased because they had fasted well in Sahih Bukhari. In Ramadan, there are also the last 10 days more virtues in which Laylatul Qadr falls, the night of power. And how will you know what the night of power is? Because the reason this ayah was revealed according to the Imams is that the Prophet ﷺ was told about a man from Bani Israel who for 83 years, 1000 months, spent the entire night for those 83 years in Salah. And during the daytime he'd be in jihad all day. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was shocked. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw this, he gave him this night of Laylatul Qadr. I'll give you this person's worship in one night for my ummah. This is the main reason of the revelation of this ayah. And Imam Malik ibn Anas narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was shown the ages of mankind. And he looked at, he looked at them and he realized that his nation, the average age, had been decreased. So he turned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw the fear in his eyes. 
my nation will not be given enough time to do enough good deeds to get to Jannah. Because our lifespan has been decreased. And the other nations had more time. They had more length of, of time span to get those things done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Laylatul Qadr. A lifetime of worship in one night. A thousand months of the highest quality of worship. The 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, we don't know. We put all of our eggs in one basket and say 27 and that's it. We have this great confidence. It can only be this night and that's it. And the Prophet wasallam, look at see how he approaches it. He says, well, you know what? I'm going to go for all 10. I'm going to isolate myself from my family and from business and from, and from the people outside and, and, and. And I'm going to stay in this masjid and I'm not going to do anything else except every single second of this day and night of 10 days. I'm going to seek Laylatul Qadr. The night of forgiveness, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants it to, surely has been granted so much goodness. It is, my dear brothers, therefore, and sisters, the month of forgiveness. The month of forgiveness, the month of opportunity, the month of reconciling with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting Ramadan without a shadow of doubt is compulsory. And anybody who does not fast this uh, month and has committed a major sin. There are two main pillars of fasting. That means if you are missing one of these pillars, your siyam is not accepted. Number one is the niyyah, the intention. The second one is to abstain from the things that nullify your fasting. There are a number of things that nullify your fasting. Number one, food, drink, and anything or same effect as food or drink. Whether it's, for example, blood transfusions, or whether, for example, drips, or whether it's kidney dialysis. These are things that break your fast. If a person eats or drinks in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan out of forgetfulness, they continue their fast. Even if you've had a full meal and you forgot. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith found in Bukhari Muslim, he said, whoever forgets while fasting and eats and drinks should complete for verily Allah fed him and gave him drink. But if you see somebody, they are eating or drinking, do you remember the hadith and say, Allahu Akbar, how lucky is this person? And you sit there and, you know, and just wish you were in their position? The answer is no. You should actually tell them because they could be doing something haram. The second thing that breaks your fast is marital relations during the days during between Fajr and Maghrib. Conjugal relations, spouse. It's better to prevent yourself from approaching your spouse during the day, which means no kissing, no fondling, no hugging, just in case. The next, if a person deliberately vomits by either putting their finger down their throat or by smelling something deliberately to induce the vomiting, you have broken your fast. The fourth is menstruation and postnatal bleeding. It's obligatory for her not to fast and it is obligatory for her to make up those days she didn't fast it after Ramadan and before the next Ramadan. According to the majority of the ulama, masturbation, which is actually haram in Islam. If a person does this during the days of Ramadan, is what invalidates the fasting. And of course, if a person intends on breaking their fast, and say, look, that's it, I can't handle this anymore. They've released their intention. Even if they don't drink or eat, they've broken their fast because you have to always couple your fasting with the intention. Hijama or cupping or what is similar to it, bloodletting, this also invalidates your fasting. Brushing your teeth with toothpaste, this is makruh. It's undesirable to do this because you can have remaining aspects of the, of the toothpaste coming down your throat. And besides, for those of you who have a bad breath, and we all have it, know that Allah Azza wa Jal, He loves this smell. That the smell that is emanating from the mouth of a fasting person is more sweeter in fragrance than the smell of musk. How many Ramadans before have we, have we lived? Promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this Ramadan I will start 
this Ramadan I will pray, this Ramadan I will repent, this Ramadan I will finish the Quran, this Ramadan will change my life. How many Ramadans have passed and we're still claiming the same claims? Inshallah this will happen, Inshallah this will happen. Promises that all fake, empty, nothing solid, no real change in our lives. If, if the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew what Ramadan means, what the value of Ramadan means, what the reward of Ramadan is, they would wish that all the year become Ramadan. He who fasts this month out of belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, expecting the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will forgive all his previous sins. What a reward, what a, what a gift. How merciful is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Imagine all your life, sin, far away, people that want repentance, people that want Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this is your time. Aren't we tired yet? Aren't we burdened yet from being far away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Aren't we bored from being in sin day and night? Don't we want Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to be with us? Don't you want Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to give you the highest ranks in paradise? To save you, to free you from Jahannam, a torture that we have never seen before and we will never understand and comprehend. My brothers, this month is extremely serious. If you want this month to change your life, you have to start now. This is when true believers, people that really want the forgiveness start. Heaps of forgiveness, heaps of rahmah from Allah. Some people unfortunately don't understand what it means to be safe from hellfire. The issue of paradise and hell is still not clear in our, in our hearts. My brothers, the, the fasting, it's an unbelievable ibadah. Fasting is for me. I will give the reward for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed its reward. Fasting is a shield against Jahannam. A person that's in, in fasting should refrain from laughing too much, speaking about things they shouldn't speak about. If someone swears at you, harms you, wants to fight with you, quarrels with you, فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صائم. We are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not need us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not waiting for our ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not waiting for our mercy. We need to repent. We need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. The person who sees this rahmah, who sees this maghfirah, who sees this season and doesn't rush and approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, needs to rethink his lifestyle. How many Ramadans have we promised Allah that we will change? How many Ramadans have we said this Ramadan will be different insha'Allah? It's time to be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very dangerous that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept me in this month. It's time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to extend in our lives, to have one proper Ramadan. Maybe this is your last Ramadan. How do you know you will live? How do you know you will live the next Ramadan? Years have passed and still we haven't made that real change in our life. Still people haven't come properly to the correct deen, to the perfect deen. My brothers, this month is our chance. It might be your last chance. I know it's very hard to believe. We usually find it very hard to believe that's my turn. We pray a funeral, we pray a janazah. Not me, not yet. It's very hard for us to think maybe this is my last Ramadan. No, I'll see this Ramadan and the coming Ramadan and the one after. Till when? One Ramadan will be my last. In this month, my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees, frees people from hellfire. Am I one of them? Every night in some narrations, every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees people from, hell, from hellfire. Am I one of them? Have I ever been one of them? Will I be one of them this month? These questions have made the Sahaba radiallahu hair go white. When this month came, they were in fear. Imam Malik, the ulama, would put aside the books of ilm and free themselves for the Quran, for the book of Allah, for dua, for ibadah. <coughs> Imam Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa, narrations say, they used to finish the Quran once a day, sometimes twice a day. Finish the whole Quran twice a day. Why? Because they were after this reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees me from hellfire. Because they understood what hellfire means. If we are sincere, if we are people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we prepare from this month from now. From this month, prepare. Go home, tell your family, tell your wife, tell your brothers, tell your friends. Whatever sin I was doing, whatever lifestyle I was living, this, well, this must stop now. I must go home and change my life from now. 
Ramadan is coming. The season of Rahmah is coming. I don't want to fall under the curse of the person that had the most accepted dua in this world, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I do not want to fall under the curse of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People who fear Allah are afraid that they will not be accepted in this month. Don't say, I will start day one Ramadan. You must enter ready, you must warm up. You must prepare yourself for this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change our hearts, will change our condition to the best of conditions, inshaAllah. All of us ready for this, inshaAllah? Jazakumullah khair wa baraka fikum. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all be accepted in this month. We ask Allah to people that practice what we hear. Jazakumullah khair wa baraka fikum.